G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, vlog time, and uh, got some things I want to talk about, put my two cents in on some uh, some issues that have gone on last week, discuss what's gone on last week, and promote what's coming up this week. Before we actually get into the vlog, I do want to say that I now have a patron page. Um, I haven't done much with it at the moment, owing to the fact that every time I try to get onto it to do something with it, something crops up and I get sidetracked. Okay, so, first off, I want to talk about the uh, absolute fucking tragedy that happened in Melbourne on Friday. As you know, Melbourne's my hometown. I'm Melbourne born and bred. I'm moving back there the minute I can get a house. And the carnage that happened in Burke Street Mall on Friday is just devastating. It is devastating. That doesn't happen in my hometown. Melbourne is often claimed the world's most livable city, and this is just horrible. A completely fucking deranged man does donuts in the middle of Swanston and Flinders Street in the city of Melbourne, outside Melbourne's one of Melbourne's major train stations, Flinders Street, drives up a fucking street that you're not supposed to drive up, mows down a heap of people, five people die, including a three or six month old baby boy last night, a 10 year old girl is killed, three others are killed, 20 something people are seriously injured. This guy was out on fucking bail. You know, here in Victoria, you're granted bail regardless of your fucking crime, this softly, softly approach that our government's got towards crime. No wonder the police are fucking hamstrung. Now, admittedly, the first reports that came out were saying that he's a terrorist and all that. No, he's not. He was born in South Australia, raised in a farm, came to Melbourne. He's got drug issues. He clearly was on something. He's gone and done that. Friday fucking lunchtime. It's the middle of the school holidays here. It's, it's just horrifying. You know, our government's piss weak on crime. Here in Victoria, they really are. I mean, you know, you've got teenage criminals getting out on bail constantly. They're never locked up. We've got, a, we've got the juvenile justice system here is in a fucking mess. I mean, it really is in a fucking mess. The gangs are running the prison rather than the other way around. We've got drug crime that you guarantee bail. Uh, murder? Yeah, you'll probably be bailed for that as well. The government won't build any more prisons. They've got this softly, softly fucking approach to crime. You know... The state of Victoria, from a crime point of view, you know, we're in a fucking mess here. And the government won't do anything about it. They're constantly saying it's under review, it's under review. It's not under review, they just don't want to bother with it. The police are hamstrung, they haven't got the resources. We've got so many fucking cops sitting behind desks doing paperwork rather than out on the street. It's, it's insane. Crime here in Victoria. I wouldn't be surprised if Melbourne is sooner or later named one of the most crime-heavy cities in the world. I mean, shit. It's my hometown. Melbourne is the type of city you can come to and you used to feel safe. The way it's going now, you'll need your own security deployment just to walk around the town. Down here in Geelong, it's not much better, but that's sort of devastating act does not happen in Melbourne. We haven't had anything like that since the Russell Street bombing or the Queen Street um, Australia Post attack or Hoddle Street. All those happened in the 80s. We've never seen anything like this. you got these deranged, drug-affected fuckwits now holding the city to bloody ransom. The threats this Greek fuckwit made. And then last night on the news, his mother was uh, interviewed and um, didn't find her that convincing about her son. But, you know, that's just... You don't do that sort of shit. 
Um, he'll be, if he's not bailed, he'll be remanded in custody. He'll get life, but he'll get it with time already served. He'll be out in 10 years, 15 years. Or he'll get life and appeal and appeal and appeal and finally get off inside five years if he wants. You know, devastating. To, to mow down people like that is horrifying. As, um, as I've called it in the past, he was ill at ease with the world, shall we say. So that's my two cents on, on that tragedy in Melbourne on Friday lunchtime. I just, you know, it shocks me to see my hometown is being run by gangs like Apex and the police want to do something, but then the lobbyists say no because you're, you're targeting these minority groups. It's the fucking minority groups that are causing half the carnage up there. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, that, that, that really, really aggravates me. It really does. So that's my two cents on, on that. Um, you know, I, I think people need to just take a look at themselves for once instead of fucking, you know, getting on the bloody shit and causing chaos and mayhem. Look at the tragedy you cause. Half these bloody idiots don't fucking care. I think that's the other problem. They do it because they can. They think of the consequences and say, well, I got away with it, I'll just do it again. And they keep getting away with it. The courts let them get away with it. Now, a footnote to this is, I'm only talking from a Melbourne point of view. I don't know about the rest of the world. It may be different. But, uh, yeah, now in Melbourne, you know, oh, yeah, you do drugs, or right, out on bail, go on, off you go. Oh, you've done an aggravated burglary, right, oh, out on bail. You keep going out on bail and you keep fucking doing it. The cops catch you again, the courts just send you out. The courts are saying they need the legislation changed. There's no way the Labor government's going to change the legislation. They're, they're too beholden to minority lobby groups. They don't want to be seen as being tough on crime because if that's the case, they'll be hounded by minority groups being claiming they're being targeted. Crime is fucking crime. It doesn't matter where you come from in the world. Crime is crime. And if you, you do the crime, you're supposed to do the time, unless you're here in Victoria, in which case if you do the crime, you go to court, get let off, you can do it again and again and again, and you might go to jail one day. So there's my two cents on that issue. Uh, next thing, now you'll remember I was, uh, I had to install a computer into my parent, my girlfriend's, I'm sorry, my girlfriend's parents' church. Uh, because their original computer had died. Let's go and have a look at it. So here's the computer from my girlfriend's parents' church, which was, when it was given to them, about five or six years ago, it was claimed to be a spec'd computer. Now, this is the one that was driving their projector. It's far from spec. Okay. Power supply is 430 watt from Antec. Decent PSU. The motherboard? Well, it's reasonable. It is a uh, GA, G... Da, sorry, GA-G41M-ES2L. This was the computer that was driving the projector. And it's supposed to be spec. It's not spec. In fact, it is far from spec. First off, it had a 2 gig of RAM on it. A Pentium Celeron 2 gig CPU. Now this is this is supposed to drive their projector, their uh, entire video system for the projector on a one gig second hand graphics card. A gigabyte graphics card using an NVIDIA GPU. Not only that. It had Windows XP 32-bit on it. Talk about getting screwed. My girlfriend's parents' church does, um, does a fair bit up there in central Victoria. And the church that looks after my girlfriend's parents' church 
instead of giving them a new computer to drive the projector, they gave them a hand-me-down. with Windows XP 32-bit and a Wi-Fi network card. Now, this board is fried. The PSU's all right, but the board's fried. So was the graphics card. The graphics card has two DVI, two HDMI, and a DisplayPort uh, plug on it. The board's fucked. The graphics card's fucked, I'm sorry. And so is this. It's a hand-me-down. I don't care what someone does for a church or, or a non-for-profit organisation, but you don't give them a crap computer in a church. You give them a computer that is going to do what the, the, the non-for-profit organisation needs it to do. And this didn't. It, it just couldn't. It couldn't do it. It was... Um, it was slow, stupidly slow, even on 2 gig of RAM with a 2 gig processor. It took about five or six minutes to boot. The drive in it was pretty rat assed It was suffering bit rot and had been since they got it. They kept losing their songs and everything like that. You know, that's just, that's wrong. There's the optical drive which has also failed, or is failing. And uh, it's just, yeah, it's, no, it's not much good. Put it that way. So um, that's, this is the computer I had to replace. And what I gave them far outweighs what they had. You know, Intel Core 2 Quad CPU, 4 gig of RAM, Windows 7, Pro 64 bit, um, a decent graphics card designed to run on a projector. Um, small form factor, obviously. But the, the picture coming out on the new graphics card is tremendous. And the person that operates this computer for my girlfriend's parents' church's Sunday service and anything else that goes on can work quicker now and more secure too. Well, this thing didn't even have antivirus on it. You know, if someone had come, you know, with a, you know, a USB or something with something silk streamed in the back side of it, it would have written the computer off anyway. They were just lucky they didn't get, you know, a virus on it. But as I said, the hard drive was suffering bit rot. Uh, it could take 10 or 15 minutes for it to boot. Uh, a few times it blue screened and then, you know, as I said, late last year, uh, my girlfriend's father rings me up and goes... Our church computer's given out, and uh, this is what I had to replace. You know, the power supply's actually a really good one. You know, it's, it's modular. You can unplug it and everything. So, that, you know, the power supply's all right, but the rest of the thing's crap. So, um, and that really irks me. You know, I'm not religious, but I don't like ripping companies off. So that's the end of that. All right, so let's review the week. The week that was. Uh, as you know, I got the new computer stuff from a mate's business. And uh, pretty happy with that. I've obviously made the new, uh, two new media PCs for the lounge room and the bedroom. The new ESXi server is installed. Uh, obviously, I'll in, I will um, put up a video of setting up ESXi through Workstation. Um, still, the mental health hasn't been good this week. I do apologise uh, for the videos this week. They haven't been as fluid or as uh, precise. They've looked more amateur than usual. I do apologise. As I said, I haven't had a real good mental health week this week. Um, I guess that's, when you suffer mental health issues, you do have weeks where things are good, and you do have weeks where things are not good at all, and this week's been one of them. Sorry, just lighting a cigarette. So that's been, uh, that's what's been happening. I, um, I do admit, I still haven't taken down the Linux build videos. I will take them down and reshoot them. Um... 
they are pretty crap. I do apologise for that. I am going to try and see if I've got a better screen here at home lying around that I can do the Linux build on. As I said, I am apologetic for that. Um, I don't know why it was so bad. Um, I did um, I did indicate that uh, part of the problem with it was that uh, ViewSonic screen that I'm using. It, it's not great. So I will take them down. I'll probably take them down. Um, well, they'll be down before this video gets uploaded. Okay, they will be down and I will retake them. Uh, next week So next week we'll restart the Linux build uh, Also, we're going to do some work on my v490 down there um, We're going to do some work on this e server again good thing is at least I've got the SSCs working again That was uh, really handy. I, sh I can't believe it was so simple and I, I think I've said this in the past before isn't it funny that it's the simple things that can fuck up a massive machine? The smallest of things. You're always looking for the obvious, but you're never looking always for the smallest thing. So, got that sorted out. With the V490, we're going to look at um, getting that uh, sorted out too. Um, now... I also need to say that, yes, I know, I said I'd get uh, order the frame buffer and USB cards for the e-server this week and uh, next week for the V490. I haven't got the funds to do that at the moment. So uh, we're going to put that on the back burner until I've got the funds to do it, unfortunately. Bit of a pain in the ass, I know. But uh, sooner or later, I'll get some money and I will get the frame buffers for, well... I think initially my plan is going to be to get one frame buffer to use between the two machines and the USB uh, PCI card for that. Now the reason I say that is, is the XVR100s are 55 bucks a pop. That's a lot of money for me at the moment. To give you an idea, 55 bucks is a lot of petrol in that car. A lot of petrol. So, you know, I've got to make sure that I haven't got anything coming up during the week that I can get the $55. Um, the USBs are pretty cheap. They're about 10 or 12 bucks a pop. So I'm not too concerned about that. Why am I going for an XVR100 over a PGX824? Slightly better picture, I guess. And the fact that there's a DVI out, which, as I've said in the past, means that I can run... DVI and DB15 VGA into the monitor that's in the e-server cabinet at the moment. So um, that's the plan. What else is coming up this week? Hopefully we'll get some more teardowns done. Uh, I do apologise for the lack of teardowns, but we will get them done. They're going to be the first. Hopefully they'll be... or Those two machines down there are, are the same. So one will be the victim, obviously. Apart from that, we haven't got much else coming up this week. I'm hoping to get um, to the TV station next weekend. We've got a big overhaul in there coming up, uh, big changes to both hardware and networking infrastructure, which I'll document for you. Um, so I'm hoping to get to the TV station on Saturday next. I've got my mate screaming at me because we've got some serious network issues in there that are plaguing us. He's screaming at me, and unfortunately, the problem I've got is to get to the TV station, I have to completely fill the car up, and that's a big blight on the budget at the moment. Um, you know, that that's tough at the moment, so um, hopefully I'll get there. Apart from that, not much else, people. Really not much else to talk about. Um... Obviously, I've, uh, I will try and get a video up, as I said, of uh, setting up ESXi to match uh, Workstation 12. I don't know about the operating systems we'll put on there. Uh, I've got 500 gig. I could put, you know, 10, 50 gig machines on there if I want. Or oh, 10, 45 gig machines if I want. But I'll definitely get that sorted out for you as well. Apart from that, not much else, people. Haven't got much else to talk about. I think that'll do it for now. Nearly 20 minutes on the vlog. Um, I'll, uh, I'll organise some other stuff later down the track. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.